And so this video begins at the corner of Jim Road and US 52. US 52 also called Brookville Road. If you go left, Brookville. If you go right, Indianapolis. Welcome to my boyhood hometown of New Palestine, Indiana. I know what you're thinking. Is it New Palestine or New Palestine? Well, I can tell you, growing up here as a boy, we called it New Palestine. New Palestine, New Palestine. I think of young Frankenstein. Frankenstein or Frankenstein? And right here, this establishment, the far end of the building, this used to be Video Junction. This is where I used to rent videotapes, where my dad did for us. I can specifically remember him renting Children of the Corn 2 and also the Army of Darkness right there. And we took it back home, which was not too far from here. I'll show you that. This is right before the sign, the New Palestine sign. Video Junction. A couple years ago, I brought my Return of the Living Dead videotape all the way out here and showed it in the video and I showed you exactly where I got it. And just up Jim Road, New Palestine Elementary School. This is where I went to elementary school, my first ever school. Kindergarten, which was in that back classroom right there, that back corner. First grade, which was in that window right there. And then second grade, before I moved schools to Brandywine Elementary, not too far from here. Man, the memories I have, especially right here, getting off of bus 35, which would have parked somewhere over here. Yeah, I always get a good feeling coming back here. This is where I began my education. This is where they taught me how to say museum. Yeah, that's how I say it. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if it's your first time, I am Tampa J. And I began in this world as Indiana Jay. I was born in Indiana, if you didn't know. If you did, you've probably been around for a long time. I come back and forth here. I was actually here last year with Chris the girl, my fiance, and my mom. We came over here. I don't think we recorded it that, that day, but I showed her where I first went to school. There it is. Man, that was a long, time ago we're talking 30 something years ago i will show you the house where i lived here in new palestine that will be our next stop i got a lot to say why am i here well today happens to be my mom's birthday and i am here to surprise her she has no idea i am in town she's actually at work right now and i am going to go over and surprise her she's in newcastle that's where I was born. That's where 95% of my family is from. I also used to live there as well. I'm gonna go over and surprise my mom for her birthday. A few years back, I flew up here for her birthday. Uh, last year, I wasn't able to make it. And uh, thankfully, her birthday was on a weekend this year, so it made it a little easier. However, if it had not been, I would have probably came up. So yeah, I had this plan for like a month, mom. So when you're watching this video back, just know that it was all planned out and I tried to keep a lid on it. I don't think she knows I'm coming. You know, moms, they have that mom instinct as they say, they, she may know I'm coming. I talked to her on the phone earlier, so hopefully she didn't hear it in my voice. Wish her a happy birthday, post it on social media, all that stuff. So yeah, this has been planned for a long time and also, my grandfather's birthday is next week, his 86th birthday. So I'm gonna see him, I'm gonna see both my grandfathers. This whole weekend is about family. Just like last uh, weekend with Chris's family, this weekend I phone up here to wish my, my mom a happy birthday. And it's been time with her. I haven't seen her since Christmas. She was down for Christmas. New Palestine and Greenfield, Hancock County. My boy, boyhood home. I spent more time here the Newcastle. I was born in Newcastle. We moved away when I was about five or six years old here to New Palestine area, Greenfield, New Palestine. And then I would eventually move back to Newcastle when I was in seventh grade. So between first grade and seventh grade, 
my whole life was here in New Palestine and in the Greenfield area. So when I, when I close my eyes and dream at night, a lot of times I'm back here. I think about this school, I think about my friends. The first time, um, you know, I stepped foot in a classroom, it was right there, actually right there. It's incredible. First time I had made friends right here in this building, one I still have today. Uh, shout out to my friend Danny, my lifelong friend, right there in that building. Wow. So, I've got more to say. There's a lot to say. Wow. So, a couple nights ago, this is, this is going to be an unofficial, official announcement. Before I say this, uh, I will make an entire video on this subject matter because it, it deserves it. I want to celebrate. This channel just hit 100,000 subscribers. Holy crap. I'm speechless. Thank you so much to each and every one of you. Over 100,000 now. It's like 1,000, 100,100. Thank you so much for subscribing, choosing this channel. Like I said in the beginning, I had no idea that anyone would watch when I created this channel. I will celebrate that with you guys. I have a plan. I did not think that it was gonna happen so soon, so I apologize. I want to make sure I come up here and surprise my uh, my mom the last two days at work, my regular job, nine to five. Yes, I have a nine to five job, if you didn't know that. Um, we're crazy, and I wanted to go out and make a video, and I wanted to do it properly, but I had to work, and then I had this flight book to come spend time with my family, so my vision uh, got a little mixed up. So I want to celebrate 100,000 subscribers properly and I will do that. I will announce that in an upcoming video. And for those other the subscribers that don't click on this video, don't probably don't even know I hit 100,000. If they didn't click on the video, or they're not looking at my page, they don't know. So we got to announce it to the world properly and thoroughly. I did uh I did share it on my Twitter. I think that's where I did. When once I hit it, um I shared it on my Twitter. If you're following me on uh, Twitter or X, whatever they call it now, also I think I shared it in my Instagram story, you already know. But I will properly make an announcement. I This is a serious, I don't know what to say. This is a serious milestone I never thought I would hit. And look, we did it. And thank you guys, from the bottom of my heart, this, this platform, this channel is everything to me. But it wouldn't be anything to me without you guys. So thank you, love you guys. And thanks for being here. It's a awesome moment to be here where I grew up, my hometown where all my dreams began, to announce, unofficially announce, 100,000 subscribers right here where a lot of me began. It's, it's kind of an emotional thing, truly. And it's my mom's birthday. Look at me, talking six minutes. So, my mom has a hair appointment, I know. Her friend has told me and I am kind of killing time. I have to head to Newcastle, which is about 35 minutes uh, northwest of here, not too far. So I'm gonna show you some things along the way. This is where I went, first went to school. I'm gonna show you where I second went to school. Also, I'm gonna show you where I lived here in New Palestine, where I lived near Greenfield, and why not do something fun? I'm gonna show you where I first watched. This is because I was at Islands of Adventure the other day. That's that's how I came up with this, what I'm about to tell you. I'm going to show you where I first watched Jurassic Park and where I lived when I first watched Jurassic Park. Love that movie. So much ahead and also we're going to surprise mom later. So hopefully I get that in the camera. We'll see. I don't want to like, I don't want to like spoil the surprise, but if I can film it, I will. I'll definitely get her in the video though. It's her birthday. I love you mom. Happy birthday. Love you guys. Everyone, thanks for being here. Thanks for clicking. We've only just begun. There's much ahead. And this school hasn't changed a bit in over 30 years. It looks the same as it did back in 1993. Or 92, 93 is when I first came here. That was about the time I was in kindergarten. And underneath that dome right there, that's the library. That's when I first rented a book where I first rented a book. It was a Return of the Jedi Star Wars book. Lived in the middle of farms, agriculture state, Indiana, 
It's all I ever knew. I thought the whole world looked like a farm. And just little small towns in between. If you take a right here on Meadow, I'll show you my first New Palestine area home. This is where my parents moved to. Actually, we moved from a town called Maxwell to New Palestine. Maxwell North and uh, Greenfield, this southeast or southwest. So on the corner here, this house, right there, that was our house. That's where I lived when we first visited Florida for the first time. Walt Disney World, Universal Studios, always also the house that I was mentioning where I first watched Children of the Corn 2, Sonic the Hedgehog, also first time I ever saw The Undertaker. Also, I used to trick or treat down these streets, all these houses, that was my friend's house. I think his name was Grant, and oddly enough, his name was Grant and he loved Jurassic Park. He had a birthday party there. And this is the house where I watched Jurassic Park. I remember, I have so many pictures I could share you. I wish I had them with me. But this is Pine Street, 48 Pine Street. This house looks the same as it did when I lived into, in it. It's got a basement. Also a garage. This is where we lived for about two or three years. This is where I lived when I went to kindergarten at New Palestine Elementary and there was our garage. Memory lane. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? I'm glad it looks good. I can remember riding my bike up and down these alleys and facing my first bully right down there. At that corner. Some mean kid didn't want me riding his bike past his home just came back to me. I remember I had just watched Super Mario Brothers and uh, I went back to the garage right here and I got my dad's tool belt and I put my, get this, I put my plunger in the belt like I was Super Mario or Luigi and I went back and I just kind of took the plunger out and kind of beat my hand with it like I, I was threatening the bully and he goes, oh no, a plumber and he started laughing at me and then, then I just ran back to the house. And over there is Pine Street, the house I just showed you right down there. Welcome to my favorite place to eat in all of New Palestine. The Frosty Boy Drive-In has not changed in over 30 years. I've showed this many a times. Every time I come back to New Palestine, I eat here. This drive-in looks like it did back in the 90s. And I used to come up here with my, my parents for lunch, the hamburgers, the grape slushies, Oh man, they're the best. I'm gonna do that again today. I'm kind of hungry. I put my order in and just like it's always been, they'll call my number and I'll come back to the window when it's ready. Here's their menu. It hasn't changed much in 30 something years. Hot dogs, hamburgers, pork tenderloins, the slushes. I got my grape slushy. I always got my grape slushy. There you go, if you take a screenshot. It'll last longer. So these picnic tables are the same picnic tables I ate at or on 30 years ago with my mom, my dad. I can specifically remember like all of my family vehicles being parked here. My dad's 84 vet. And a memory of sitting in the car right here eating our food here at Frosty Boy. And on Q95, the local radio station, Bob and Tom, they were advertising Leonard Skinner coming to town. And I said, Dad, I would like to go see Leonard Skinner at Deer Creek. And guess what? He bought us the tickets. And that was like one of my first rock concerts. That specific memory right here. Got my grape slushy. These cups have always been the same. It's always come in a white bag. And yes, they're crinkle cut fries. The hamburgers have always come in a white styrofoam. Mm. And I just noticed my rental car here is Frosty Boy Blue. Frosty Boy Blue. Man, this tastes like the 90s to me. The memories that just came back to me sitting here. It was so good. Always thought this building was cool. Smoking Barrel Barbecue. Hey. 
That looks nice. That wasn't here when I was a kid. All right, now on 100 West, past this cornfield, that stretch of woods right there, those were my boyhood woods. That's the woods, those stretch of woods behind the neighborhood I live that I explored. That's where I shot my first BB gun. Well, not the first place, but I shot it a lot there. Built my first, one of my first forts. That woods right there I played in almost every weekend for two or three years. And I had a little ATV four-wheeler. I would make trails through. Yeah, right here, some things never change. That's a big one. This is the cornfield across the way is Sugar Creek, a creek I used to play in. Right here, 769 West, 500 South. This is where I lived from about 1996 to 2000, 2001 actually. It was spring 2001 we moved back to Newcastle from this house and the house looks just like it did. We had a basketball goal. Different one, similar. I got a lot of photos, memories, videos from right here. I've shared this multiple times over the years, but always love coming back here and thinking about all the good memories. This is where uh, I had my first dirt bike, my four wheeler. I would ride it in those woods I just showed you. Made my first like home videos that I have somewhere. I gotta find those. Those would be fun to upload. There's our house, Mom. Mom bought this house. Mom and Dad. It was the only house we like really owned. We we moved a lot, like a lot. This was probably my sixth or seventh home up until the time we lived here. This is a little neighborhood called Shell and Estates, and I know it very well. The woods behind there, I know like the back of my hand. So cool. Had to show you guys. So. When I lived here, I didn't go to New Palestine. We moved here and I actually had to switch schools. And that's where I'm gonna go to next. I haven't done this in, woo, 25 years, maybe more than that, almost 30. Little Sugar Creek, I just wanna take a peek down here. I used to just kinda of like walk down here, it's all grown up, wow. I remember like, uh, we called them crawl dads, like little, little crawl dads coming up and uh, hanging up on your skin. Also, you gotta watch out for leeches. Pretty crazy to think that those are the same rocks that were there when I was a kid. Oh yeah, looks the same. I used to play down in there. Always exploring as a boy. Always on an adventure. Like Tom Sawyer or Huckleberry Fenn, that's what I would think. Or like Indiana Jones. More so Indiana Jones. I wanted to be an archaeologist one time. But when I found out that being an archaeologist means that you're not fighting supernatural powers, you're not fighting Nazis, and you're not searching for the Holy Grail all the time. That kind of changed my, uh, my ambitions. <laughs> wow, this looks the same. Yeah, I used to play down on this creek. Watch out for uh, leeches and crawdads. And welcome to Brandywine Elementary School. This school to me was always out in the middle of nowhere. Because it is. It's in the middle of so many cornfields. This is where I went from third to fifth grade. Three years, also my brother's first school. This is where he was at kindergarten. Kindergartner. And back out, out back is Brandywine Creek. Brandywine Elementary, Brandywine Creek. So when I rode the bus, we would pull into this spot right here. Spot number eight. And right there was my third grade classroom. This school has also not changed in the last 30 years. It looks just like it did when I was here. 1997, well, 96, 97, all the way until 99. So my third grade classroom over here, that first classroom before the doors right there, that was Mr. F that was Mr. Frieden's room. That, he was my fourth grade teacher. And then on the back corner, fifth grade classroom, Miss, Mr. Robinson. And this is where we used to play football games, touch football games, this little yard here. This fence wasn't here, but 
the original playground set over there, the basketball goals, the swings are the same. So many memories. When yo-yos were big, I used to bring my yo-yos on the sidewalk out here, would gather with my friends, do a little sleeping with our brains and our butterflies. Those were big in the 90s. This was a good place to go to school. Brandywine Bulldogs. We're the Bulldogs. And now we come to downtown Greenfield. The courthouse, straight away, the courthouse square. Right over here on the corner, across the way here, we're heading to the Village Theater. So, I have shared so many times of the first place I ever watched a movie, the Castle Theater in Newcastle, Indiana. That was where I saw every movie on the big screen up until I was five or six, until we moved to this area. And then, we would come to Greenfield, the closest theater to New Palestine, to the Village Theater. And it's over here on the corner. Cool to be back here. I've shown it a few times. I've seen so many freaking movies, so many classics inside this theater I'm about to show you. We're gonna get a whole lot closer to talk about that. And before we do, I just wanna say the Pizza King, my favorite pizza place, is right down there and also James Whitcomb Riley's house, the Hoosier Poet Historic Home, right over there. I'm not gonna show that today. I've showed it so many times before. Those videos are out there, but this is just, if you've been watching a while, you might remember those videos. That is right there, not too far from the Village Theater. There were many a Friday nights we ate at that Pizza King before we came down and watched the movie right here. And it looks like recently they have restored the theater and they're playing classic movies, not first run movies. See in about 2005, actually no, before that, way before that, 2000, they built a Cineplex just west of town, a six screen brand new movie theater back then. And that actually kind of hurt the village and it would eventually close. Sad when that happens. But this building, at one point, the last time I was actually in this theater, it was a haunted house. In about 2003, I walked through the Village Theater. It was a haunted house and Freddy Krueger was in there. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, Haunt was on and where I first watched a ton of 90s classic movies. Jurassic Park, June 1993. This is where we came. I remember that night and how amazing, how amazing of a time that was watching that. Such a great movie. Congrats to the class of 2024. This has not changed. There's a W there. Now, I know it as the Village Theater. I think it used to be called maybe the Wright Theater when it originally opened. Don't know the ancient history of it. I just know that I saw Homeward Bound here, Dumb and Dumber, The Beach. I think The Beach with Leonardo DiCaprio was the last movie I watched here. That would have been about 2000. Yep. Watched that with my dad and my brother. Also, again, Jurassic Park, Dumb and Dumber. Uh, the Flintstones. I watched the Flintstones here. Honey, We Blew Up the Kid. I remember that because my parents said, hey, do you want to go to the fair down the street? Or do you want to go to the movie? And I said the movie. I wanted to see Honey, We Blew Up the Kids. And that's what we did. It looks the same as it did, the lobby area. I wonder what the theater looks like now. It was a haunted house at one point, so. I think we walked through the actual theater. Like it was like they used the theater seats now that I recall. Oh, this is nice. It's a little bike. Got some flowers in it. There's the Indiana logo right on the back. And the courthouse. Always remember that tower. I remember getting my tetanus shot in that courthouse back in 1992-93. That, that was a bad day. I didn't know what I was in for. It ended up being okay, but I remember being terrified of coming out, or when I was coming, going into there, getting a shot to a, a six-year-old boy. That was terrifying. So every time I see that tower, I think of terror. That might be the original Tower of Terror for me. I wrote the real one a couple years later. The Tower of Terror, truth be told. No hard feelings against this building. I actually think more of Riley Days, the Fall Town Festival where we celebrated Greenfield's own James Whitcomb Riley, the Hoosier poet, 
the man who wrote Little Orphan Annie. Ever heard of that? Well, I did a whole video on that. Little Orphan Annie grew up right here in Greenfield. Yes, the one who inspired the play. Fun fact. And there used to be a sports store right there in that building. That door right there. I want to say it was called... No, that's Newcastle. I was going to say McCleary's, but McCleary's is in Newcastle. What was the name of the sports store? Because I... Uh, I got a lot of stuff from there. I remember my dad purchasing me some basketball shoes in there. I can't think of the name of it. Got a sunroof. Just like back home. Highway 40, State Road 40, busy street. If you go right, you can take this all the way to Baltimore, Maryland. The old National Road goes all the way there. And look at this, why I'm at the light? I looked over, historic National Road. There's the history. So now I'm heading to Newcastle. We're gonna go surprise mom. I gotta go find her. She should be at the hair salon about right now. So by the time I get there, I'm thinking she will be done, her hair will be done, and I will surprise her. Mom, I will find you, and I will surprise you. If you don't already know I'm coming, I don't think she does. Who remembers my hometown Pizza Hut video? Well, there it is again. Had a few birthday parties in there. That's where someone gave me my Metallica Reload CD. Of course we're taking the scenic route. Look at that beauty right there. A lot of old barns in Indiana. East 234, South 109. This is a little town called Kennard. This is where my great grandparents lived. And my grandpa was a minister, my great grandfather, before they moved to Newcastle. My grandma, actually, when she was born, they lived here in this town. And Kennard, to most folks around here, that's the town that the tornado pulverized. A tornado came through here in the 60s and took out most of the town. They had to rebuild, and that's what Kennard's known for, sadly. This is Tornado Alley. Grew up in Tornado Alley, tail end of it. So, my grandparents had moved out of here. My great-grandparents had moved out way before the tornado came through here. But I do have relatives that also lived in Kennard when the tornado came through. A really small town and my grandmother is actually uh, buried in the cemetery just north of here and recently my uncle passed away and uh, he's buried in that same cemetery and probably off camera some point this weekend as I always go visit my dad I'm gonna go visit my uncle yeah small town of Kenner I mean we're almost through it this is pretty much it. One of these houses were uh, my great grandparents. I just, I don't know. I, I wish dad was here to tell me. And entering my hometown and birthplace on Highway 38, down the hill through the Blue River Valley and up, you can make out the Henry County Courthouse. Way out there, that's Broad Street. You can see the courthouse that was built in 1865 my great 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 grandfather his name was solomon robe he worked in that courthouse back in the 1860s i want to say it was four greats i looked up uh, his history also shown his grave before buried just north of here near a little town called lure which my ancestors founded and i'm gonna pull off right here because this has to do with my mom. This parking lot to this plant over here is a steel plant, steel refining, called Allegheny Ludlam. And when we moved back to Newcastle on September 11th happened, also at that same time, my dad suffered a heart attack at 38 years old. Our lives changed drastically. Dad had to end his construction business, his fence business, because he could no longer run it because of his health. We moved back to Newcastle. It was a lot, it was a lot cheaper place to live. Although my parents never said that. I'm an adult now, I know what happened. And I want to thank my mom because she went to work in this steel mill. The fourth or fifth woman ever to 
ever work in here with and I remember her coming home in soot with horror stories this was some hard work for a 30 something year old woman to work at and that was her second job she would come out here and work every day plus she maintained her real estate license I just want to thank you mom because that that moment was hard and I know I know it was hard on dad it was hard on you and uh, I just thank you for doing that for me and my brother and I, I re I've always appreciated you going to work here and dealing with what you had to deal with um, the harassment the the work itself making you get down in the shot pit and shoveling um, if I would have known now if I would have known then what I know now and was who I am today I would have never let that happen to you um, and I know it was just what happened love you mom all right a little delay I've been texting my mom asking her about her hair appointment and how it's going she just now got into the salon chair so there's like an hour delay and welcome to Newcastle Indiana's first and only Dunkin Donuts just freshly opened no pun intended a couple months ago my mom was so excited she was sending me pictures I think I'm gonna get a tea I never thought I'd get Dunkin in my hometown Wow that's amazing a couple months ago I made a video called Florida's first McDonald's and I said I would show you the very first McDonald's I ever ate at well that one got torn down that was the one my aunt shout out to Aunt Sharon who lives in Newcastle that's the one she was the manager at it sat in the same spot but sometime in the 2000s they tore down the original McDonald's and built this one but that was where I first ate McDonald's and get this why I've got some time I'm gonna show you some stuff right here in the parking lot first video store and you saw my second Pizza Hut there's my first no longer Pizza Hut now I'm gonna have to ask someone to remember this because I can never think of the name of this video store so circa 1987 all the way up to the early 90s this was a video store and this is the video store where I first was rented horror movies by my parents this is where I first got a copy of Friday the 13th a nightmare on Elm Street all the classics uh, Bill and Ted's this is where it came from that and a handful of other um, grocery store videotape rental stores inside like Marsh or Kroger and a few mom and pop ones but this was the main source wow I have never shown this before and I'm shocked I don't think I have but this was it it was painted blue back then spent a lot of time in there a lot of time specifically remember Friday the 13th Jason takes Manhattan this is where I would have got that. And thank you to Chris the girl for reminding me. I said I was going to get my mom flowers for her birthday. And I totally forgot. So thank you, babe. It's a blessing that I have extra time now because my mom's hair appointment's going a little longer than anticipated. I can go back to Kroger or go to Kroger and get flowers. They have flowers at Kroger. Hey, look at that. Remember when I mentioned grocery store video stores? Well, Kroger had one. And I specifically remember renting a movie called A Gnome Named Norb, Anthony Michael Hall, right here at this very Kroger. Who remembers that movie? A Gnome Named Norm. And I found it. I'm gonna get this display, plus I'm adding this vase, which is additional. I'll take the plastic off, but this'll be it. Happy birthday, Mom, from me and Chris. I Avenue and 18th Street. I shared this a few years back. That is the last remaining brick of the Chrysler factory, originally the Maxwell factory. Both of my great grandfathers and a lot of my family worked in that former factory right there. I remember the old factory before they tore it down. It was abandoned for a while. But yeah, Chrysler. They made cars. They still do, but that's where my grandfather made cars, both of them. So I'm gonna wait till my mom 
gets out of the hair salon, I'm gonna call her and just see where she's going. Try not to give away my plan. Try not to let her know that I'm in town. And then I'll figure out how to surprise her. This behind me right here, specifically this half of the building, that used to be the local DMV. That is where I got my driver's license. 16 years old in one day right there that would have been 2003 i've been driving wow i've been driving 21 years it would have been about this time yeah right after my birthday 21 years ago and i remember that day because i had baseball practice that was the only time in my sports career i told my coach i wasn't going to be at practice i literally came down here after school got my license and then drove back to try high school which is down 103 there that's where my dad also went to school that's where i was as a freshman i drove back in my car for the first time with a license legally <laughs> and i went to baseball practice i got there right at the end i'll never forget that day and welcome to sunnyside elementary school this is where mom went to school this is where she met her best friend. Shout out to Angie, who is like my aunt. They have been best friends since like they were 12 or 13, maybe a little younger than that, their whole entire lives. But yeah, this is where my mom went to elementary school. Goes with the theming. And as you can see now, I'm in the cemetery. Came to visit my grandmother. Always have to come see grandma. She passed away in 2022. Miss you, grandma. My mom might actually come by here. If she might. I could see her here. I'm still waiting to hear when, uh, for when she gets out of the hair appointment. It's good to come out here. Say hello to Grandma. I miss you. That's okay. How'd the hair turn out? I like it. I made it shorter. Oh, okay. And blonder. Okay. You know. What you doing, honey? Oh, uh, I just uh, got off work. Were you, okay. What are you doing tonight for your birthday? Um, I'm good. I'm running. Someone sent me flowers to work. Oh, nice. I'm going to run and get my flowers and go home. Oh, okay. Okay, so as you heard, my mom's out of the hair salon. She likes her hair. She was in there three hours. She's on the way to work right now to grab some flowers that someone sent to her. So I am going over there to try to catch her. She is there right now. I'm about a minute away. Here we go, surprising mom on her birthday. All right, so I'm at my mom's work. That's my dad's old truck. My mom drives my dad's old truck. I'm gonna wait right here. So when she comes out, I'm gonna surprise her. I got my hat off. I'm down in my seat so she doesn't see me. All right, there she is, there she is. Hey, lady! Oh, oh my God! <laughs> what are you doing? I took my hat off. When did you get here? Ah. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Happy just... birthday, Mom! Oh, hi, honey. God, let me put my. Oh no, that, those are from Chris the oh, girl. You like them? Oh, She's like grabbing gorgeous. them out of the car. All right, so I surprised my mom. You had no idea. Do you promise you you had no idea? I had no idea. I was jumping up and down, scare me to death, uh, cry. You tears. about dropped your flowers. <laughs> I know. I'm glad I caught that on camera. I'm glad to be here. I love you, Mom. Um, we've been talking off camera. We actually saw my grandpa. We saw my aunt. And we saw someone. You said that she delivered you 59 years ago. She was the nurse, nurse in the hospital. Yes. That's amazing. And you, you're you friends with her. Yes, I am. To this day. And we ran into her. And that was magical. Because here's I, that was 59 years ago today. You ran into the nurse that delivered you. That's a, that doesn't happen a lot. No, it it's a small happen. town, so the the chances have increased with that situation. But that's really cool. Um, we're gonna go get dinner. I'm not gonna film all of that. We're gonna go have a good time. Maybe we'll do something else this weekend. Uh, I want to thank everyone for watching, being a part of this video. Happy birthday, mom! Thank you. You want to say anything here at the end? I'm just so excited, and I just want to. Um, I'm just so proud of you, Jason. I, hitting 100,000 subscribers. I was yeah. this week. I told him. I said, "You're gonna hit that on my birthday. I can just feel it." And then 
Guess what? Couple, it was the day. Just the day before. Just the day before. So I just Called wanted it. to say the congratulations. And I'm so happy that I get to be with you. I'm going to cry. I'm so happy <laughs> to get to be with you to celebrate the 100,000 subscribers because I'm just so proud of you. Thank you, Mom. And, um, I couldn't have done it without you. you and couldn't. I'm so happy you're here on my birthday. I'm happy to be here, too. And Chris wishes I'm she sorry. could be here. No, you're good. Um, I love you, Mom. And love you guys. Love you guys. We're going to end it right there. Know you're awesome. Know you're loved. No matter who you are or what you're going through, just know that there's always much ahead. Thank you, Mom. That was perfect. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Maybe see you tomorrow. I don't know. We're going to spend time with family this weekend. I've got plans next weekend. I'm going to be traveling a lot from now on to the end of the year. There's always much ahead. Happy birthday. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.